Okay, now we can get started. So this is a very, very serious keynote, um, as I've titled it. So hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm so thrilled to be speaking today at DjangoCon. Um, and thanks for rolling out of bed early enough to catch my talk. I attended a lot of conferences, and I miss the keynote a lot because I want to sleep in because I'm kind of on vacation. So you made it. Congratulations. Um, I applaud you for being here bright and early. All right, let's. Uh, Go to the next slide. All right, so before we get started, a little bit about me. My name is Chloe Condon, and earlier this year, I was named one of the 200 plus thought leaders in crypto and blockchain. Now, if you read my speaker bio before this talk, this may be a little confusing to you, um, but I'm gonna tell you a little story before we get started here. So, I'm about to tell you a very inspiring story because this is a keynote, and in a keynote, you're supposed to tell some moving story about how you became who you are, how to be a good leader, maybe announce a new product feature. So um, I'm gonna put on my keynote TED Talk voice, and I'm gonna talk very slow. I'm just kidding, that would be a very long keynote. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through this inspiring story. And what I want you to walk away from with this are seven easy steps that I took in my career. So let's, let's dive in, shall we? All right, so step one, join a LinkedIn group. So in my experience, um, LinkedIn is mostly a tool used by recruiters, hiring managers when maybe we're, we're getting ready for a phone screen, um, looking up a candidate, maybe an older white businessman ran randomly adding me for no apparent reason. Um, but this began last year um, when a woman reached out to me um, to speak to a group of women in crypto and blockchain about being a woman in tech and what that experience was. Um, so I joined the private LinkedIn group to get more info and the timing didn't work out for the talk, so I didn't really think much of it again. So, which brings me to step two, once I figure out how to get through my slides. All right, here we go. Ooh, I promise I've given talks before, you guys. Hold on. <laughs> step two is, it's going to be a really great step. Ooh, there we go. All right, step two. Forget about it for six plus months. Did you know that LinkedIn has groups? That's funny, I totally forgot that they did too. Um, as someone who doesn't really frequent LinkedIn groups, um, I totally forgot to leave said women in crypto and blockchain group as I do not work in that industry. So imagine my shock and confusion when I had 30 plus messages, connection requests, Twitter follows um, from DMs asking, me, someone who knows nothing about crypto for advice on their crypto startup, inquiring about consulting prices, wanting to connect over our shared love of Bitcoin. Very strange. So, step three, don't learn anything about crypto. So let me remind you that I know nothing about crypto and blockchain. I work as a developer evangelist at Sentry.io. We're an open source error logging and reporting tool. I don't own Bitcoin. Um, the only crypting that I'm familiar with is the Crypt Keeper. So you may be thinking, well, now is a good time to learn, right? No, <laughs> I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life. Um, and frankly, I'm not interested. So step four. Get copied and pasted into several articles and continue to learn nothing about crypto and blockchain. So puzzled by this influx of messages, I decided to Google my name and the words crypto and blockchain, and I got added to an article titled 200 plus thought leaders in crypto and blockchain, the ultimate crypto list for event planners, influencers, and the like. Um, this is an article that I now lovingly call um, 200 plus thought leaders in crypto and blockchain, the ultimate crypto, blah, blah, blah. copied and pasted from a LinkedIn group I forgot existed. Um, and thus began this lovely game of telephone, which was my crypto career. So step five, insist that you know nothing about it. So soon my LinkedIn in inbox looked a little bit like this. I got some lovely examples here for you. So here's a good one. I see that you're in the blockchain space. It would be great to connect. Uh, I was pleased to see your, you liked our crypto and blockchain list. I just want to connect with you in case you wanted to add or change your wiki. I'm in a wiki? 
about crypto and blockchain? Okay, cool. Um, we are always looking for interesting speakers in China and Germany. Um, happy to be connected. Um, and then here's here's another great one here. Um, oh, if anybody's interested in property coin. Um, yeah, so there's, there's, I'm really not one that should be giving advice here. So uh, let's, let's go to step six here. So step six, tweet about how ridiculous it is, how little you know about it. So trust me, I was not giving out any vibes that I uh, knew anything about this topic. Um, here's my favorite, whoever signed me up for a blockchain email list, I hate you. Um, adventures in crypto thought leadership continue. This is still happening to me. Uh, I don't understand why I'm not giving out any vibes. Um, step seven, put a line in your LinkedIn about how you literally know nothing about it. So this is the kicker. Um, this is, was at the top of my LinkedIn for a very long time. Um, and I'd like to point out these two messages, which I literally got last week. Um, so this is still happening to me. Um, this is a, a true story. I, I wish that it wasn't. So result. The opportunities will roll in by the hundreds. So this is this is all uh, to say that I've added this. You probably noticed if you read my speaker bio. In February of 2018, she was named one of the 200 plus thought leaders in crypto and blockchain and still knows absolutely nothing about crypto and blockchain. Seriously, not a thing. She considers it her greatest accomplishment. Um, <laughs> I'm speaking at a couple conferences this week, and I think a, a new social media intern didn't pick up on the humor and said, come join crypto and blockchain influencer. And I was like, no, don't say that, please. Thank you. That is the end of my talk. I'm just kidding. That's not the end of my talk. Um, but uh, hi, everyone. Um, since this talk is all about bringing comedy and humor into tech, I figured I'd start things out with one of my favorite stories of being a uh, woman in tech. And yes, that is a true story that actually happened to me. You can read more about it on my Medium page. Um, with even more details about my journey, hashtag journey, into thought leadership. Um, so, okay, really, who are you? So, hello, my name is Chloe Condon. I am not a thought leader in crypto and blockchain, but here are a couple of things that I am. So, I'm a developer evangelist at Century.io. We're an open source error logging and reporting tool. Um, I'm a writer. If you're looking at me and thinking, she looks kind of familiar, I'm the girl awkwardly standing with the thumbs up in the um, wine cave after a party for the What It's Like to Be a Woman at a Tech Conference article, um, which came out last year. Definitely check that out. Um, men and women, figure out what that experience is like. Um, I'm a Hackbright Academy graduate. If you're not a familiar with Hackbright, it's a 12-week um, software engineering boot camp in San Francisco um, with a mission to change the ratio of women in tech. It's an all-female program. Um, we also learned Django at uh, Hackbright, and I, I believe there are a couple of Hackbright speakers here today, which is super exciting. Um, so shout out to Hackbright. Um, I'm also a frequent uh, oh, I'm a, I'm a former actress. Um, don't worry, there will be a lot more quirky photos like this as the talk goes on. Um, and I'm also a frequent Twitter user. This is one of my favorite tweets that I've put out there. I take a lot of photos in the bathrooms at conferences. It's kind of my thing. Um, so uh, definitely follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is going to be at the bottom for all of this. Um, uh, you can take photos, but flattering photos only. Like people down here, like get a good angle. Don't get under. I'm kidding. It was a joke. It's a, it's a talk about comedy. Um, so um, please laugh during this talk. Uh, if you don't laugh, they're videotaping it, and um, it'll look really bad for me. So please. Please laugh. So there's my Twitter handle at the bottom. All right, so hi, I'm Chloe and I'm a recovering actress. Oh, good, you guys can read, cool. All right, so I have to come clean. I wasn't always a quirky blonde girl who wears bows in her hair and gives technical tutorials, writes blogs, does the occasional tech conference keynote. In fact, I was a quirky girl who wore bows in her hair and sported many wigs and did countless commercial auditions and briefly worked as a children's birthday party entertainer, which is a whole other keynote that I should do. Um, so here's a couple photos from my, my previous life of, of being an actress. Fiona and Shrek the Musical. Um, this is a really bad Frank Sinatra musical I did once. This is me as Penny in Hairspray. Um, this is some men carrying me. I don't know what show that was. Um, <laughs> And this is from How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, which um, I feel like I live out every single day. Um, 
All right, so, but one thing has stayed constant in my life from those many years of being an entertainer, something that I bring into all my work, and that is wearing bows all the time. Actually, it's comedy, that's what the talk's about, but I do wear a lot of bows, as, as is illustrated in this photo. Um, so a little bit of background on me. Um, I'm a non-traditional background engineer. Um, both of my parents were artists. My dad is a director playwright. My mother was a costume designer and illustrator. So growing up, I was around computers and I was great at using them. My dad brought home a, a Macintosh Plus to do WordPress processing on. It was super exciting. We could type up stories and print them on those noisy machines where you had to rip off the things on the side. Um, if you don't know what that is, I, I feel very, very old, um, but this eventually transitioned me into learning what all the files and folders and programs did. Um, I, I learned a majority of my numbers and spelling from this uh, game called The Playroom. I still have a lot of um, visual association in my head with that, although I didn't learn colors from it because it was black and white, because it was the 90s. Um, but here's the thing, my parents weren't able to teach me about computers um, beyond the basics. Um, I didn't know what an engineer was. Both of my parents were artists. And when I asked my parents how computers were made, I'm sure I got a, a brief answer and to be perfectly honest, um, up until relatively recently, maybe a couple years ago, I thought that engineers wore lab coats and had hammers and were physically putting computers together. Um, I, I didn't really have um, any exposure to this field. Um, there weren't any engineers in my life. There certainly weren't any female engineers in my life. Um, and a lot of the media that I consumed didn't have anything in that either. So the fact that I'm here today speaking to you at a technical conference is in itself a little bit of a miracle. Um, also, shout out to Mario Paint from that last slide. So <laughs> I went into this profession, uh, theater, thinking it was something that I could support myself with. And I was exposed to the creative world very early. I saw Death of a Salesman when I was four years old, probably a little bit young to be seeing that. Um, I went to a performing arts high school. Um, I ended up getting my theater degree from San Francisco State University. And reality set in when I did Xanadu the musical, which is this lovely rainbow photo over here. Um, I had a cardboard cutout of me in the lobby. My picture was on buses. People were tweeting me photos all the time and my picture in the paper. And I thought, I've made it. This is it. And then they handed me $500 for three months of my work. Um, <laughs> The sad thing about theater is no one sits you down while you're getting your four-year degree and asks you, do you know how much money you're going to make when you do this? Um, but I did have a very long theater career uh, after college. So it wasn't until I heard a talk at Google um, about getting young women interested in programming in STEM that I really started to understand that this is something that I could do. I, of course, Googled girls who code. I was not a girl. I was a 25-year-old woman. And luckily, I had started dating my boyfriend, who is an Android developer, started taking, um, actually, Kenneth's uh, treehouse class on Python, and I'm here today. Um, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with a, what a boot camp is, it's typically a 12-week program, sometimes longer. It's very intense. You learn recursion in a day. They don't call it a boot camp for nothing. Um, preparing for whiteboarding interviews for the first time is a lot like going into combat, as we all know. Um, so shocking realizations um, when transitioning from theater to tech. There's a lot of things that are drastically different when it comes to the theater world versus tech. And as someone who performed in musicals from the tender age of four, um, it's very much the opposite of Silicon Valley. For one, um, the gender balance is completely opposite. I have some really, really great news for you dudes out there who want to start doing musicals. If you can kind of carry a tune, um, come on down to your local community theater or Broadway um, where there's about 40 to 50 women auditioning for one role and the four men who end up auditioning and a hobo from the street who wanders in all get cast as all the male leads in the show. So um, bundles of opportunity for you there if you're interested. Um, and because of this, uh, it's a lot less competitive. Um, so uh, I went from some place where 30 to 40 women were trying to get the same role to companies begging me to join their startup. Um, LinkedIn went from a very boring, dormant place to an influx of messages, but maybe that had something to do with my crypto blockchain expertise. I'm not really sure. Um, also, uh, people do not sing as much. Um, it's probably the biggest difference. Folks in musical theater definitely burst into song and dance numbers a lot, if you've ever hung out with them before. Um, also, I get paid a living wage, what? Uh, I get a job based on skill and not one of the following. 
my weight, my ethnicity, my ability to tap dance, not having a believable Italian slash Bronx accent, my parents' donation to a theater, having an affair with the director, ability to belt a high C, gender. So sadly, these are actual reasons why <laughs> I was not uh, given jobs as a musical theater actress. Um, so it's a, it's a completely different world. Um, I wish they were fake examples, but they are real reasons. Um, but one of the things that was most striking um, was this. Meetups, events, content, et cetera, in tech were pretty boring. So I have to give a little bit of context here. Um, I have been fully immersed in the performing arts since birth, and you have to understand that until I became an engineer, pretty much every single part of my life had some sort of element of entertainment in it. Um, even at family dinners, I would perform elaborate dinner theater for my parents up until age 12. It was really embarrassing. Um, but even when it came to what I would consider boring, or bad theater, and there was at least some amount of fun comedy camp involved. Um, that's why we go to the theater, right? We go to be entertained. So when I first started giving uh, talks at conferences about two years ago, I thought I was bombing. Um, I would throw in a bunch of gifts and jokes and puns. I tell a lot of dad jokes. I apologize in advance. You've probably already heard a lot of them. Um, but they would, my shtick would always be kind of met with these blank expressions, people on their phones, the occasional sleeper. I totally get it. Time zones are a beast. Um, but the one person who would keep me going would be the nodder. Has anybody given a tech talk before? <laughs> Yeah, there's always that like one glorious human who's paying attention. They're like, yes, I agree. And you're like, thank you, sir. Um, so uh, I, I really think that, you know, people come and see my talks and they're the quirkiest talks they've ever heard. And I used to do musical theater. I'm about as quirky as they come. But shout out to the Nodders. You do God's work, really keeping us alive up here. So thank you. So why do I have to give a disclaimer when I'm giving technical talks? Every time I give a talk, I always apologize and I go, hey, FYI, I give a lot of dad jokes. Um, so why do I have to do this? What is, about, uh, what is it about tech conferences, um, meetups, panels, to, like even online tutorials that have made us grown accustomed to this sort of monotonous, monotonous speaker, grainy footage, cold pizza, warm beer, you know those meetups I'm talking about, um, where the speaker is on stage giving the body language that they would literally rather be anywhere else than in front of everyone in the room. So of course I understand that musical theater is a completely different entity, um, and it's not called the entertainment industry for nothing, but even some of the worst shows I've seen, and I have seen, you guys, I have seen some terrible shows in my 29 years on this earth. I saw a one-man Christmas carol one time. Um, but even that had some sort of entertaining element in it, and I had no wine before that show. <laughs> so even if it was, you know, a grown man playing Scrooge to himself as Tiny Tim, it was bad, but, like, I'm talking about it now and we're all laughing. Um, and I, I understand that these are two different mediums, musical theater, tech, um, and it's, it's something that, as someone from the musical theater world, tech talks felt a lot like Saturday Night Live, um, a Saturday Night Live sketch that's Tim Calhoun, and I hope we have sound. Let's see. There we go. I am Tim Calhoun, <laughs> and I'm running for the office of President of America, United States. A lot of people are wondering, who is Tim Calhoun? <laughs> well, I want to tell you now who is Tim Calhoun. <laughs> I, Tim Calhoun, is leader, <laughs> confident, Economy. <laughs> Dancer. <laughs> Strong. Both up here and with muscles. <laughs> I'm pro-ISIS. 
whether large cubes or small flakes. <laughs> I says, keep my drinks cold. <laughs> That's good for America. <laughs> Go, I says. Okay, so that's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> but it is drastically different from musicals. Um, also, I would totally vote for Tim Calhoun. All right. Oh, no, we're not going to play it again. We're going to go to the next slide. Okay, so <laughs> obviously exaggeration. Um, but it was quite polarizing going from musical theater to tech talks and meetups. Um, so as a non-traditional background engineer, I'm a huge advocate for folks who come to technology by way of literally any other industry. Here's a couple of my faves. This is my friend Robert. He, came, he was a horticulturist before he turned into an engineer. My friend Catherine, who's an opera singer um, turned engineer. She works at Apple now. I highly recommend checking out her RubyConf talk that's called Mozart Would Have Been an Amazing Programmer, talking all about how music is very similar to programming. Um, this is my friend Elaine. She's a teacher turned engineer. She's also job searching, so definitely hire her. She's amazing. Um, and this is my co-worker's um, mentee from Hackbright, who is a professional Muay Thai fighter um, before she turned engineer. So there's so many different amazing ways that you can come into this industry. But you get the point. All of these wonderfully diverse perspectives from tech bring their previous lives into their tech careers. Um, and when I first began my journey into tech, not blockchain, um, and decided to attend Hackbright Academy, I felt a lot of conflicting feelings about having a BA in drama from San Francisco State University. I would have these fantasies about building a time machine and um, basically using all the money that I used towards my tuition to buy a house in the Bay Area in 2007, and then teaching myself how to code on Udacity while living off of free pizza at local meetups. But alas, I was 26 with a useless degree. Or so I thought. So what do you do with the BA in drama? If you are an Avenue Q fan, you're singing the song in your head right now. <laughs> uh, so two years ago, I felt very, very different about my four-year theater degree than I do now. Um, sure, I took a lot of very bizarre classes where we did an improvised musical about a skeleton woman. What? Um, I was in a musical about playing chess in the Cold War. That's a real show um, that played on Broadway, uh, question mark. Um, and who could forget when my dad came all the way from Sacramento to see me play young whore number one in the first stage musical that I did. <laughs> However, those four years taught me, that's me on the right. Um, <laughs> Those four years taught me a lot of things that I use on a daily basis as an engineer that many folks with traditional computer science degrees haven't been exposed to. Um, so when I was an actress, I was typically cast as one of two types, um, the ingenue or the quirky sidekick. So here's a picture of being an ingenue. If you're unfamiliar with these terms, an ingenue would be sort of a Disney princess, love interest type, whereas a quirky sidekick would be something like Donkey from Shrek. Um, which is ironic because I played Fiona, but she's sort of, of an amalgamation of both of those people. So while the ingenue is typically the leading role in the romantic love interest, I always preferred playing the quirky sidekick. I love to make people laugh. Um, I love the science of perfecting a joke, the whole rule of three. Um, I love figuring out the, just the perfect phrasing, timing, facial expressions, body language that really go into making it land. And playing Penny and Hairspray was some of the most fun that I had on stage. Age. For two hours, I got to wear amazing wigs, be really weird, make people crack up. And to me, there's no better feeling than making people laugh. It's truly my drug of choice. Um, and giving tech talks is about as close as I get to performing these days. Um, other than the occasional karaoke session that they have at an after party. So naturally, once I began to give technical talks, I wasn't sure how my sense of humor would land with a mostly white male 30-something crowd wearing Patagonia vests. I'll let you read this real quick. This is one of my faves. It says, Devin Dinkelman, grew up in SF, lives in West Village, started an app company called Chadley, was Evan Spiegel's fraternity brother, has 11 pairs of Allbirds, stoked because he just crushed 28 days of keto diet. This is my boyfriend. That's not a picture of my boyfriend, but my boyfriend did all those things. Um, <laughs> 
Um, so as I mentioned before, I started give, prefacing all my talks and giving people permission to laugh. Um, and after seeing success with this approach, I began to change my approach to not only writing talks, but also creating content, building developer communities, establishing my personal brand. In short, I just really wanted to make people laugh. And also, this is the Instagram account that this came from. I'm gonna give you a second to follow it. It is really, really great content. <laughs> All right, now for something completely different. It's going to stop, I promise. This is mind-numbing. So guess what? There's science behind this. So I used to do children's theater back in the day. That's me, the yellow, yellow crayon. I'm very diverse. I, I played yellow and blue crayon. Um, and I, I found that doing these shows, I would be exhausted afterwards. There was not enough Red Bull in the world to keep up the energy needed to keep children ages five to seven engaged for an hour. And if you've ever attended a children's theater show or even watched a television program, I'm sure we've all seen at least a clip of Sesame Street, you'll notice there's a lot of color, movement, songs, jokes. It's a total sensory experience. And this is on purpose. Why? Because children ages five to six years old typically can only attend to one activity that is of interest of them for around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and they generally should be able to like filter out different distractions, but 10 to 15 minutes is the limit. I'm also willing to admit that adults probably even have a shorter attention span. Um, we're all addicted to our phones and about 10 minutes into an OKR meeting, we're all itching to check our phones, am I right? So, next slide, will it work? There we go. And that is why memory hooks are so, so, so important. Making people laugh is one of the fastest ways to break down barriers and winning people's goodwill. Um, now, a memory hook doesn't have to be funny. Um, it To be memorable, they can be emotional. You can think uh, Don Draper in Mad Men, or you can think of any Apple keynote that you've heard where they talk very slowly and talk about how their product has changed the world. Um, but memory hooks have many forms, um, and I encourage you to do your own research on this, but this talk is obviously about humor. All right, so content, it doesn't have to be boring. Um, so someone who does this really well is the company that I work at, Century.io, and in particular, my coworker, Richard, who is in charge of all our content. And one of the reasons that I decided to join the Century team was actually this statement on our website, your shit is broken. Um, <laughs> it just is how a developer talks. Like when you're out on the conference floor, none of us are talking like the pamphlets or the you know technical things that we see that are very corporate on these websites. Um, also, I'm going to just minimize this real quick and show you our careers page. The magic of technology. Okay, there we go. So this is our careers page at Century.io. And you see they've got kind of this typical stock footage thing and then she closes the door and you're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, a little man on the table. What's going on here? Um, so it's, it's really fun. Um, you scroll down here, we've got all these gifts. I think under our benefits, we say that we have unlimited LaCroix, duh, because that's, that's what everybody wants here. So, um, and every employee who starts out at Century gets a welcome gift, which I have some examples of. Um, here we go. So we make a welcome blog post and GIF for every single person who joins our team. This is Erin, I sit next to her. <laughs> she loves donuts. Um, here's another one uh, that's one of my favorites. So as you know, we are a um, bug reporting tool. So here's Lauren, gonna catch some bugs. A wild venonaut appeared, go sentry. I just have to shout out to Richard here because I saw him working at this on his desk for about two weeks. <laughs> Lauren used releases. It's, and it's in real time too. We've all played Pokemon. We know how long it takes to catch. An exception was caught. Um, <laughs> Aha, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then one of my favorites, this is a, a, an, a shout out to 80s films. This is our PM, Sarah, trying on different outfits. Um, so this is actually something that wanted me to work for this company. Um, I was so used to seeing the careers page and having it be so boring. Um, and these looked like people that I wanted to work with because 
I like having fun at work. Um, and this is way more memorable. Um, so this is a memory hook. And as tech companies, having a sense of humor and branding does, it not only humanizes our product, but um, it gives a sense of, it humanizes the working environment. By the way, Sentry is hiring. Um, hit me up afterwards if you want a job. Um, you do get a welcome gift if you come and work for us. Um, all right, next slide. Oops. I started the video. There we go. So content. Um, so in addition to our careers page, Sentry also has some quirky and fun content. Um, I created a series called Exception Perceptions, which is a technical series where we answer engineering questions about error reporting and beyond. We do some uh, shows with other engineers at other companies. And these are five minute videos. Notice that they're five minutes um, because we want to keep that short attention span of our viewers, where we dive into technical concepts but also have fun. Um, for example, Richard and I created a two part series that I'll show you a little clip from. That was um, episodes one and two of Star Wars, but good, not the bad Star Wars. Uh, let's see if I can. This might not load, but you can look at it on your own if you'd like. Um, we'll let that load for a second. Um, woo! The beauty of technology. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, you can check those out. They're, they're um, century.io slash tutorials. And you don't have to work at a quirky small startup to do this. Even larger companies like Microsoft have joined in doing the kind of joined the comedy train, so to speak. Um, so this is a clip from the open source show that they just started, me and Bridget Krumholtz talking about Even if your users bugs. have the ability to do that, which developer tools, so yeah, they probably do, they may not want to. Like, they may not be super interested in debugging your tool for you because they are trying to use tools to get their work done. Exactly. And for example, I'm a very visual person, so I'll show you in this handy demo that I prepared. <laughs> so, as you can see, this is not a realistic application. It's built to throw errors, which we probably wouldn't build something like this in the real world. But I can kind of demonstrate what this would look like. So it's a simple voting application. Totally I'm normal working app. Um, <laughs> I should also note that the reason that this is not on a green screen is because Bridget's hair is green. So um, we couldn't film it on a green screen like the other episodes of this. Um, so at Century, uh, we also did this with our meetup. We wanted a monthly meetup that would engage with the community, create brand awareness, and be authentic to the Century brand. Um, so we created something called Century Scouts, which is uh, my brainchild, um, which is a camp-themed meetup, and we also made a commercial for it, which I will play for you right now, if it'll load. Perhaps I will refresh it, a hard refresh. Here we go. All right, cool. And then, before the meetup even started, they ran out of pizza. <gasps> and he started to do a live demo of his product. And the Wi-Fi wouldn't work. Oh! Oh. Oh. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. We were just talking about old meetups that we've been to the past. Pretty spooky, am I right? We've all been there before. Meetups with the same cold pizza, boring speakers, weird topics. But let's be real, we're really there for the good conversation and maybe a couple free beers, but I digress. But what if there was a meetup that was fun? More talking, less listening. One with diverse speakers from all kinds of backgrounds to help kick off the conversation. That's looking great, y'all. And just for fun, what if we threw some camp food in the mix? Don't forget the boozy hot chocolate. Oh no, I couldn't, I'm working. Oh, thank you. And just for fun, what if we threw some patches in the mix? That's right, patches. We'll have limited edition patches and stickers commemorating each meetup. And yes, if you collect them all, we totally have a surprise for you at the end of the year. Look, we know you can go to a meetup any night of the week in SF, and we're here to make them a fun, open, engaging discussion with a campy theme. Get it? Nailed it. Nice. Our promise to you, we'll never pitch you, feed you cold pizza, make you sell Girl Scout cookies, or make you bored. So what are you waiting for? Come and join Century Scouts Meetup today. All right, so that's our commercial. Um, we actually find that a lot of people find us through our commercial or through word of mouth. Um, 
uh, which is really cool. Um, so it's not your typical monthly meetup. And yes, we do have patches and stickers for each event. So when, when we were kind of drafting this out, we were thinking of the average meetup. You arrive, grab pizza, maybe a warm beer, chat with other attendees, sit down, hear someone, usually a recruiter, talk about how they're hiring, blah, blah, blah. Um, first speaker comes up, usually always male, shamelessly plugs his company, tries to do a demo, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Second speaker is very nervous, Wi-Fi is still shitty, you start to look at your phone, you kind of tune out, start questioning why you're here on a Wednesday night. You slither out as soon as you can, the event ran 45 minutes over. And then for Century Scouts, we wanted it to be different. Um, we wanted you to arrive, take pictures with a giant squirrel in front of a tent. You also uh, asked someone to take a pic of you in our giant camp chair. You chat with attendees, quickly grab some s'more fondue, boozy hot chocolate, gushers, grilled cheese. Chloe comes out, that's me. Um, intros of the PowerPoint karaoke speakers. You laugh a lot, the sugar is kicking in. The panelists come on stage, you learn a new or familiar topic from a truly diverse panel of speakers. Someone performs a song. Yeah, we, we did that one time, that was fun. Um, you grab your patch and sticker, you get kicked out of the venue because you've stayed too long uh, talking to other folks. And then I have an asterisk, there's an introvert option, which is you go home, post about how great a time you had on Twitter and catch up on Westworld, because I've done that before too. Um, but we really did see a big difference between making our meetups fun, which honestly seemed like a no-brainer to me, a musical theater person. Now, clearly, you do not have to do patches and stickers for all your events. I lovingly say that our meetup is the most extra meetup that ever meetuped. Um, but there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Um, so we found that a lot of folks find out about us through the commercial, but it's mostly through word of mouth. People say, I went to a meetup that was fun, and people go, what? <laughs> what? There was food that was delicious, um, and also like PowerPoint karaoke. Um, and it's, it's been kind of a, a mind-blowing phenomenon to me that people are like, how did you think of this? How did, well, I was bored, <laughs> and I wanted to make them fun. Um, the highest compliment that I've gotten in my career as an engineer was uh, a person came up to me after a Century Scouts meetup and said, I've never laughed at a meetup before, um, which was crazy to me. Um, and and that, made, that made me very happy, mission accomplished. Um, and yes, we do really have patches for all the events. Definitely do come and check them out um, and get one of our only you can prevent dumpster fire pins. Um, <laughs> Here are a couple ways um, that I've seen other people do this successfully. So another example of this is, oh, uh, do I have a, oh, there's a question right over there. What? I think someone has a question. What's going on? Sure do. Um, Chloe, first of all, great talk. And may I thank say, you. I love those pants. Oh my gosh, thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, what are some of the ways that we can make tech talks more engaging? Oh, wow. Thank you so much for the question that I planted in the audience. Um, so this is actually something that I saw um, my good friend Eve uh, Percello do in a talk once at a React meetup. It was probably a room full of 30 people. We were all really tired after a meetup. Not only was the technical example that she gave interactive, we were all able to interact with it as she was doing it, um, but she planted questions in the audience and it was so, so, so funny. I have never seen a group of tired engineers wake up that quickly because we were all waiting for the next one to happen. Um, so uh, definitely there's, there's some interesting ways that you can spice up your your technical talks, if you're doing those. Um, so maybe you hate public speaking. Maybe you don't think you're funny. Maybe you don't think your team can create some choice gifts. Um, this is not a call to action to get everyone to develop quirky content. It's more of a call to action to bring humor to everything that you do. Why do we love HBO's Silicon Valley so much? because it's realistic. If it was a reality show, I would cry every time I watched it. We, we love it because it's humorous. Um, making people laugh is really one of the fastest ways to break down barriers between strangers, win over an individual, a group. So next time you're creating a technical sample, um, an application, organizing a meetup, um, maybe even having an OKR meeting that you know is gonna go really poorly, um, try to find the humor and the joy in it. How can you make things better by lightening the mood? Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> Channel your inner Jared, who makes me laugh every single time. 
So that's all from me. Thank you for listening to me tell a lot of really bad dad jokes. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful conference, and I will see you on the conference floor. I am the one with polka dot pants. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.